Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is the third video for chapter 9. The topic is partial differential equations. In the previous video, we derived the formal solution for the heat equation. So let's summarize it here and we will take some examples and discussions here. So we have the heat equation. This is the heat equation. Um, in one space dimension defined on the interval and then we have boundary conditions where the temperature is fixed zero at the two end points and then we have an initial condition that's the initial temperature distribution so by using um, the separation of variables and Fourier series and we have a formal solution in terms of a series and the solution is the sum of uh, all these functions we call un and adding them all up and the un takes this form cn an exponential function with a decay times a sine function um, in the space x and here um, the constant um, cn is determined by um, the initial condition fx it is actually the Fourier sine coefficient of f so it takes this form and then n is from 1 to 3 okay so um, let's take a look at this um, form of the formal solution and observe some properties so some discussions um, this is the formal solution which I repeat here so first we observe that um, for each un that is this function here what we have is a sine function in x this is fn of x which is a sine function and these are called um, harmonic oscillation and then in in time the gn of t function here is an exponential decay and then and due to the fact that the the decay rate is positive we see that when time goes to infinity in the solution each term here will go to zero for every x so the solution oscillates and the amplitude of the oscillation decays exponentially and the rate of this decay is this number here lambda n square where lambda n is uh, m pi c over l so pi c l are given constant the only thing that would differ is the index n and will go from 1 to infinity so we see that that gives us exactly the um, decay speed and it depends on n so when n is larger lambda n is larger than the decay rate is higher and it decays faster so um, what does this mean in for um, the eventual solution is that um, the high frequency components in the initial data are um, decayed or we say killed um, much more quickly than the lower frequency ones so after some time um, let this decay happen for a bit then what remains in the solution the dominate terms in the solution would be the terms with the small n and last observation is the behavior of the solution as time goes to infinity here we see that every term of un go to zero for all n so we're just adding up all zeros so therefore um, the solution will just be zero for all x okay. so this solution here when t goes to infinity the behavior of u is called the asymptotic solution and then eventually it becomes something that is stable in time that doesn't change anymore so the solution will contain will not contain t terms okay so therefore this is also called the steady state of the heat equation so what does it mean here so here we see that we have a physical problem that you have a rod of length l and uh, you put the temperature at the two ends to be zero and you have initial temperature distribution and then you let the temperature um, 
evolve in time and then eventually in the end the temperature will become constant zero throughout the rod as time goes to infinity. Okay, so um, now um, we take an example where we will explore the solution with uh, different initial conditions and see the effect of it. Okay, so for simplicity, we just set C to be 1 and L to be 1. So the first initial condition we considered is um, fx is 10 times sine pi x. And this is the term when n equals 1. Then we see that um, the, the CNs will have C1 equals 10, which is the same number here, and then all the other CNs will be 0. The solution would have just one term, that is 10 times e to the negative pi square t, So because n is 1 here, so n squared is 1, and sine pi x. So it's an oscillation in, in the space, and the amplitude of the oscillation here is an exponential decay in time. Pick a later time, let's say t equals 1, and we can calculate the amplitude of the solution, which is just this number here, when t is 1. So it will be 10 times e to the negative pi square, and then you can hit your calculator or whatever computational tool you have, and you find out that's about 5 times 10 to the negative 4. So initially the amplitude is 10. After one unit of time, it shrinks down to the um, uh, amplitude to the magnitude of negative 4. So it gets pretty small. Okay, now... Um, the second initial condition we consider is uh, 10 times sine 3 pi x. Okay, So the amplitude is still 10, but it has a f higher frequency for the term n equals 3. So therefore we have a c3 is 10, which is just this number, and all the other c's will be 0. Okay, So we can put this in the solution, and uh, we find just one term amplitude 10 e to the negative 3 square pi square of t and sine 3 pi x. So again, let us compute the amplitude of this uh, oscillation at t equals 1, that is this quantity here when t is 1. So this is 10 times e to the negative 9 pi square. And if you calculate it, you see that's about 2.65 times 10 to the negative 38. So 10 to the negative 38, this is a very, very small number. So recall the, with the first um, initial condition where we have 1 here, the magnitude was 10 to the negative 4. So this is much smaller. OK, let's look at um, one more initial condition. And we just put the initial condition to be the sum of those two we have looked at. One is uh, sine pi x, the other is sine 3 pi x with a higher frequency. And then using the property of a superposition, then we know that the solution here will just be the sum of the two previous solutions. We can add them up like that. And uh, let's look at the amplitude of the two oscillations at t equals 1. The first one is of 10 to the negative 4, and the second one has uh, 10 to the negative 38. So it is um, not a surprise to observe that um, this is so much smaller than this one that it doesn't really matter in the solution, which um, we also say that this first term dominates. So in the solution here, this term would dominate when t grows a bit bigger. Okay, so this short example um, verifies that 
the fact that for the heat equation, the higher frequency temperature distribution would decay much faster. Okay, so that's all I have to say for this video and uh, we'll have um, more examples and discussions in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.